Welcome to Creative Shadows, a video series highlighting music, art, photography, and anything that people do to express their creativity. I'm here today with Angela Linder of A. Linder's Finds. Angela is an artist, a picker, and an upcycling designer. She'll be sharing more about what she does and showing examples of her work coming up on Creative Shadows. We are here today at District Designs where you can view and purchase Angela's merchandise. Like I said in the introduction, Angela is an artist, a picker, and an upcycling designer. Angela, for those who don't know, what is an upcycling designer? So an upcycling designer would be somebody who changes the purpose of something or reimagines an item. It could be anything from taking a dresser and changing the color of it or like I said, taking ch and changing the purpose of an item, or maybe taking bits of architecture and rebuilding something completely new, making it functional again, giving it new life. So the main thing that you do that with is furniture and interior design items? Yes, um, I, find, I find everything from furniture to old pieces of um, architecture. Sometimes I rebuild, add wood pieces to it, uh, and I find, interesting items that you use to make your home beautiful. Yeah, and you showed me some of your merchandise and I believe, do you, like like a desk I believe you showed me, did you sand it all the way down to bare wood and repaint it or resane it? Is that kind of what you do? Kind of that, that's, on a lot of the pieces that's what I do. Yep, I, there's different uh, painting te techniques I will use, uh, different finishes, it's, it's, but it's usually sanding down, uh, fixing anything that's broken on it, maybe finding new hardware, picking out a color, a technique, and just turning it into something that somebody's going to love again. Yeah. I know you were in my house when we were practicing uh, that one song that we recorded yeah. together. Yeah, a lot of fun. And there was an old desk that I told you how my mom and dad had that desk when I was a little boy. Yeah. And you kind of started like, oh, I could do so much with that desk. <laughs> I was totally distracted by that desk. It was an awesome <laughs> desk. It was. I'll have yeah. you do that yet. I I'm, I'm waiting. You just let me know. So you have plans for that desk, yes. and you know what it you was. Want to do? I, I couldn't. I couldn't concentrate. I kept thinking <laughs> what that desk could be. <laughs> so you tell me about you. The first thing you did as a kid to get into creativity was being an artist. Is that right? You started drawing and painting and stuff like that. Yes. Uh, I think I was pretty much born an artist. Uh, I hear stories from family members that said I was drawing pretty much out of the womb. My earliest recollection of being artistic was probably when I was four years old. I just remember always needing pencils and paper, always wanting to find something challenging to kind of recreate it on paper, and I just loved to doodle. I doodled all the time, books and books of it. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. uh, we do have a painting behind us. That is yours. Can you explain this painting to us? Yeah, well, this was my uh, coming back to being an artist picture. The, my, probably one of the first paintings I ever did fully for me, because I've always had jobs where I did art for other people. And so I was at home with babies at the time, and I decided, you know what, I'm just going to do something for me. So I had cut out this piece of wood and I put it in the garage and I would come and work on it little bit by little bit when somebody was taking a nap or you know, they were playing and eventually it got finished in 2016. So <clears throat> you're like me, uh, usually art artistic people they have one main focus, like my main focus is drumming and songwriting but my creativity has led into, you know, I used to make commercials at a TV station, yeah. the video. So I, I think your creativity, you started off with drawing and painting, but it's led you to other things like singing. Yes. And also right. the interior design. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Um, I think the interior decorating really was, uh, I moved so many times. I think we counted one time. I have moved like 30 different times in my life, which is incredible. And I had to figure out how to recreate spaces all the time. And we've come to a new place. How do I make this furniture fit in here? And so I got a lot of practice just within my own life how to do it, but I loved it. I loved the challenge. I almost do better 
with a problem area than I do with a sterile area where I get to create from complete beginning, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I, I just fully enjoy it and just started running with it. And I think you told me when you're younger, you didn't have a lot of money. Yeah. So instead of going out and buying new furniture, you would yeah. just redo the furniture. Hat. Yeah, I was recycling and upcycling uh, before it was a popular because it's pretty it's pretty popular now um, with the uh, the lack of wood and furniture and stuff. But back then, we uh, when my parents my parents had separated and we moved, and we just didn't have a lot of money. But I had really great taste. <laughs> And I wanted certain things, so I would go, I'd find free stuff, I would go to secondhand stores, and I would buy something, and I would paint it up, and I'd make it the way I want, and then I had, you know, something special for me. Yeah. It, Creative, artistic people have to you have create, to create things. Yeah. yeah so, is. and it sounds like you, you know, you took your creativity and found a way to earn yourself a living mm -hmm. with Alender's Finds. Yeah, so... Back, we moved here in 2016, but we were living in Ohio right before that, and that's when the kids were very young, and I had to stay at home, and I started playing, like I did this painting, and the other thing I started doing was I would take the kids to a garage sale, I'd find a really cool piece of furniture, and I'd take it home, and, and then I would, you know, paint it up or turn it into something else, and, and by the time we moved here the next year, um, I had about five pieces at my house and enough for like a couple friends to come over and say, oh, look at that, that is so cool, look at what you do. You know what, there's a store downtown that does that. And um, they literally took me to District Designs, where we're at right now. Um, this was actually on the corner of Main and 7th at the time. And I met Susie, Susie Schwartz, who is, she is a darling, she has been so wonderful for me. Uh, I showed her my pieces. She was like, you know what, Let, come on in. Just let's try your pieces out. So I took those five pieces. They sold. Uh, kind of took a lot of advice from Susie, you know, how to be successful in this. And I uh, submitted myself to that and just started going at it. And it just kept growing. It's like every year, you know, I started with just a little bit. And the next year I would, I'd have more pieces. and. And she gives me a lot of freedom to be as successful as I want to be. So that has helped me out. Um, this was the store where I got started and created A Lender's Fine. So this is one of those examples of turning something, changing it to use. This, believe it or not, was a piece of a hutch and it's turned upside down. Right now, those big china cabinets that our, our parents had and everything, a lot of people don't want the big bulky top, so they take the hutch off and they just use the bottom. Well, this was one of those pieces that was left over. It was such a solid um, piece and it was really very beautiful with great lines. And so I just looked at it in the garage upside down. I was like, that could be used just like that. So what we did was we repainted it and did a little distressing to add uh, some farmhouse feel to it. I made a wood top to go on top of it to have a shelf and I turned the doors upside down so those are usable and then I added some feet to the bottom so it would come up off the floor and now it's like a really great storage piece. So this is one of my table and chair sets I have here in District Design. Um, I really enjoy table and chair sets. Usually. I don't find a complete set, and this is one of those examples. These chairs were a old 70s type style that had orange velour on them. And then the table was uh, more of a farmhouse uh, style with the type of legs it has on. I cleaned it all up, and I have two of my colors going on. This one's called Jacksonville on top, and then on the bottom is my newest color called Harbor and matched it all up together. Uh, with the chairs, I couldn't find the fabric I wanted. So I bought plain fabric and I printed the fabric myself to uh, use on these chairs. Uh, there was a few different techniques. I did some antiquing on the bottom. I did some dry brushing on top to give it uh, more depth and glazing on the chairs and brought it all together and here, boom, you have a six-seater 
for all ready to go for somebody's house. Next to Angela is her own brand of paint that she created and has been selling for how long? It's going on four years. Oh, have you had a lot of success selling your paint? Uh, it is. It has consistently went up in sales every year, and um, I have gotten very good feedback about it. So we're just keeping going. Yeah. Is that for like just furniture or just about anything? So it's a funny thing. So chalk paint. I had. I went to art school many years ago, and so I knew the ins and outs of uh, paint. And I was, I, I, I thought this was a fad, chalk paint. I didn't really understand it. And so when I upcycled things, I would take it all, the varnish off. I would make everything, you know, sand all the way down to the wood and make sure it's durable and, and all this stuff. Well, as the business started growing and I was home with the children and doing a lot of this in my house, it's like, I, I, I have to, cut the corners somewhere and that's when I started looking into chalk paint and what it was. Um, I started trying out a lot of brands either it was crazy expensive or it didn't work. If, it, if I bought a, a less expensive brand it just didn't seem to do what it said it was going to do. So I started researching and making my own paint. I create different colors. I put the chemicals the way I needed to. Um, I needed something that wasn't going to cause a lot of fumes in the house because I had babies and um, started just making my own paint. Well, I started going to shows. I would do like the Pickers Market or something like that. And people would ask me, oh, what color is that? Where did you get, you know, where can I buy that paint? And I, I didn't know what to tell them. I was like, well, I made the paint. And so after a while, friends, I would try to even give the, the recipes away, but there was no guarantee that they would use the right chemicals or stuff that I was doing, or they'd make a mess in their house. So I started giving the paint away in jars to people. And Susie, I approached Susie about it. I was like, what do you think about us selling this? And she's like, oh yeah, let's just, let's do it. And it has, it, it has just kept growing That's ever awesome. since then, yeah. So Angela, it seems like your business is growing and expanding. Where do you see yourself in five years? Well, it's funny that you asked me that because I was just pondering this a little mm, couple weeks ago. Like, where do, where do I want to go with this? And um, there's been some projects that the doors have been open to me that's one of them being over at Columbus Road. I was able to partake in the remodel mm -hmm. of our sanctuary. It was very good. And, thank you. And we had an incredible team. We had so many talented people working on that. And, but I really liked it. I really enjoyed the transformation on a bigger scale. And so I would like to start partaking in bigger uh, projects like that, maybe, you know, additions to houses and, and possibly, you know, maybe go back, get a little schooling to help me out with that. So mm -hmm. I think that's probably which way we might be going. That's good. Yeah. Well, good luck with that. Thank I appreciate you, you uh, sitting in today and oh, let me interview you, you and showing examples of your work. I appreciate being here. I love the shows that you're doing, and I was actually very excited to be here with you. All right, yeah. thanks. And thank you for watching this episode of Creative Shadows. We will see you next time. We're here today with Angela Linder of A Lander. A Lander. A Lander. A Lander. Okay, you guys have got some to be quiet. In the background. Okay, I know. Well, okay, are these you, two? You let me know. We can lock them up All in the right, closet. So it's to. okay. All right. In three, two, one. So, Angela, not only do you do paint and art and make. <laughs> Dang it. Okay, I got it. In three. And juggle. Okay. <laughs> blooper reel. I probably got more for the blooper reel than the actual. <laughs> I knew that was going to happen. I'm oh. a professional. <laughs> I used to work behind the camera, so oh, this yeah. is my first time in front of the camera. You're doing so. good. Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. I like to think so. Yeah. What's this guy doing? I know. Sit, sit. <laughs> he has this t-shirt that says social, social distance. Social distance. Champion. Is that Bigfoot yeah. on there? Yeah. What the yeah. Yeah, he's the champion. Oh. Do you believe in Bigfoot? Huh? Do you believe in Bigfoot? No, I never will. <laughs> Try that. I, I'm so sorry that I moved my hands so much. I am Italian. Or what? I'm Italians Sicilian, do that? Actually, yeah. Italians move their hands a lot? Yes. We have a hard time. Sometimes if I have to sit on my hands, I can't talk. I didn't know that. Yeah. You're not going to hit me, are you? Let's hope not. <laughs> Just act right, okay? <laughs> yes, ma'am. Here we go. In three, two, one. Let's look at the truck.
That might be an issue, now that I think about it. Turkeys. All right, here we go. Uh, I went to art school, like I told you. And uh, so I, I know the ins and outs of how paint's made. And uh, when I started this, I had a very specific way where you you have to sand all the way to the, the wood. You know what, stop. That last truck was, that was like, pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and then it, was, it wasn't real smooth, too, so we'll just keep going. Yeah. Okay. And it, and it seemed like that truck was like it was five miles an hour. It was just going forever. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Trucks. Who do they think they are? I was substitute teaching in uh, Liberty. Yeah. I was substitute teaching second grade. Mm -hmm. And this little girl comes to me and goes, Mr. Sparks, how old are you? I go, how old do you think I am? She goes, 85. <laughs> Wrong I'm like, uh, yeah. I kind of started laughing. Yeah. She goes, no, I'm serious. Aren't you like 85? Oh, I'm like, no. Kids are brutal. It's like, you see, see, you have to learn not to ask those questions. I know. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never do that again. Uh, we'll just start talking. Let's we'll start free associating. You know what that means? No. You just kind of start going off the cuff and okay. what comes, comes. And All right. That sounds good. Yeah, It's I'll a psychological it. term. Yeah, we can I used that. to be a psych major. Really? Free association is... You take pen and paper and just start writing without thinking about okay. it. Okay, okay. I like that. But we're going to do it verbally. Okay. Free association. Okay. I think that's right. I did get a D in that class, though. So. <laughs> Some side guys watch it. No, Sparks, you're way off, you big idiot. <laughs> it's not what it means whatsoever. Okay. Uh, Here we go. We're going to free associate. Okay. Cool. First time, first shoot yes. where there was no. I will be the one. Camera shutting off or yeah. audio not working. Mm -hmm. I might look like a real weirdo on the thing. Oh, no, yeah. But. <laughs> what do you think? Should I put that there? Product placement? <laughs> this, <laughs> this episode of Create Shadows, <laughs> sponsored by Essential Everyday's Pure Drinking Water. <laughs> yeah.